Hey guys, this is Mr. Herbst here, and this is Resting in Action Potentials in Plain English. Now here I have an actual neuron at rest. Uh, now we'll find out in a second why resting is actually uh, sort of a, a false term. But anyway, you can see here, this is a cell membrane of a neuron, and you have three proteins, mainly the sodium channels, you have the sodium potassium pump, and then you have the potassium channel, the big guy right here. This one here, this guy is constantly at work, which is why calling this at rest is kind of inaccurate. But anyway, the sodium potassium pump is going to pump out uh, three sodiums, so one, two, three sodiums for every two potassium, so one, two potassiums that come in. And the sodium channel here is usually in this constant state of being locked. So it's not going to allow any of these sodium here to, to pump in. So that is not going to happen. We are, however, um, going to have this potassium channel over here. It is going to be a little bit leaky. So this here, potassium, is going to at any time going to want to rush out due to the laws of diffusion. If you remember back, laws of diffusion, high concentration to low concentration. So just the fact that we have more potassium on the inside of the cell than on the outside means that potassium is naturally going to want to go this way. Hey, but guess what? We have these polyatomic ions here. We have phosphate sulfate right here, which have a negative charge. So they are going to help to uh, attract, like a magnet, laser beam. They're going to help to attract back in that potassium. So at any given time, there's a lot of stuff going on when a neuron is at rest. Sodium potassium pump, this big guy right here, pumping out as much sodium as possible and pumping in as much potassium as possible. And uh, the, um, the these here uh, polyatomic ions sucking back in all the, that potassium. Um, so this here is a cell at rest where on the outside we have, a, we have sodium and on the inside we have lots of potassium as well as these, part, these uh, polyatomic ions. And so that is going to give the overall inside of the, of the neuron a negative charge and the overall outside of the neuron, boom, a positive charge. Now I'm going to talk about what happens when your, when your neurons fire. Now here I have to review, outside we have a lot of sodium and inside have, we have a lot of potassium. Uh, this is resting, this is a called resting potential of a neuron. Did you know that your cells can actually produce voltage that we can actually measure? We can actually measure the electricity produced by a neuron in your body. Now normally your cells are here at rest at negative 70 millivolts. What does negative 70 mean? Well that means that they have the ability to produce a voltage. Um, so we're going to get what's called depolarizing and we're going to produce, boom, we're going to produce some voltage. Now how does that actually happen? Well, right here, this sodium channel uh, will begin to open when we have a stimulus. Maybe something's coming at your face or maybe it's getting, maybe something is, is hurting you or maybe it's too cold out. Where we're going to, we're going to, that sodium channel is going to open up and allow some sodium to, be, to dump in. And that's going to make that cell a little bit less negative. And so things are getting a little bit less negative, less negative, less negative, and if they reach this critical point at negative 55 millivolts, that's called a threshold. We're going to get all these sodium channels open up, and we're going to get all this rush of sodium into a cell, just massive amounts of sodium rushing into a cell, which is going to cause these potassiums over here to, um, if you remember, um, uh, uh, same charges repel each other, so positives repel positives. It's going to force these potassiums to, to want to go somewhere. Where can they go? Well, the only way they can go is out through the potassium channel. So that's going to force these potassiums out, which is going to help to repolarize the cell back down to uh, its, its normal resting state. But something weird happens is that sometimes this huge wave of these sodiums comes in and all these potassiums rush out. Man, massive amounts of potassiums rush out. Too many potassiums rush out and we get what's called hyperpolarization where we polarize too much and the cell doesn't like that. So what does it do to recover from polarization, hyperpolarization? Well, again, these polyatomic ions right here, they play an important role in sucking that like a magnet, tractor beam. <laughs> sucking that, that potassium back in. Not only that, boom, right here after we have that firing, that producing that electricity, that sodium potassium pump is going to start wham, 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 pumping out more sodium, pumping in some of that potassium, helping to bring things back to a resting state. So anyway, that's, a, that's the action potential. A lot going on in the action potential, and that is what's going to be the basis of a nerve impulse and producing that electricity, which we can measure, and what your brain functions on, and how your whole body nervous system works. Anyway, this was Mr. Herbst, and this was Action and Resting Potentials in Plain English. I'm signing off, folks. Have a nice day.